Hello friends, this is Dr. Amarjit Kaur, Professor of Accounting and Business Communication at the Department of Management, Gurugram University, Gurugram. I am author of about 60 research papers and have edited or authored uh, 11 books in my career, uh, career so far. I have been working in the education industry and food industry for more than 30 years now. It is my privilege that I am here with you to talk on 8D problem solving method. So, as the name suggests, 8D problem solving method is it is a very unique method of solving problem for any business and it can be applied in personal life as well. It can be applied in any NGO, any non-profit organization, any uh, public sector unit or government sector unit or in a private business setup. So, uh, AD problem solving method is a you know method accepted universally for almost all kind of uh, organization to solve problems they face nowadays. So, businesses are facing a lot of uh, competition, lots of problem and because of that fierce competition, uh, we have problems which really evolves very, very regularly and they needed to be tackled or addressed very soon, as soon as possible because the competitors really take advantage in case a business fails to address a problem on time. There is a likelihood to lose customers, there is a likelihood to lose suppliers, there is a likelihood to lose the business even in case problems are not addressed timely or and efficiently. So, that is why this method is very very important to learn and understand. So, what is uh, the background about this? Businesses around the world experience a dynamic business environment and fierce competition which in turn results into various challenges and problems. This demands speedy solution and fixing of such recurring and or peculiar issues. So, uh, as I said businesses are across the world they are you know very di dynamic business environment and the competition which is resulting into many kind of challenges and the problem and this really demands on the end of the business uh, to provide uh, solutions which are speedy and they need to fix up those uh, such problems or issues which could be generic in nature, which could be peculiar in nature, which could be peculiar to the product or the price or the customer or the process, it could be peculiar to any functional area, marketing or finance, right. So, this really demands that solution is speedy and it fix up the problem permanently. Further, thereby businesses need to learn and adopt problem solving methods which can help understand problems and provide solution to the benefit of an organization. So, uh, not only that businesses need to learn that what problem is, they need to adopt this method that how to solve problem in case any such problem. So, there should be uh, an automatical, it should, be, it should be so well synced in the operations, in the processes of the business that anytime any problem occurs, the business should be able to provide solution immediately. Now, let us talk about what is the meaning of 8D problem solving method. A problem solving method which recognizes, fixes and eliminates recurring problems is known as 8D problem solving method. This is a comprehensive, qualitative and collaborative practice that is used by professionals to solve problems. So, this 8D problem solving method is a method which recognizes the problem, then it after recognition of the problem, it tries to fix up the problem and then it eliminates the problem uh, recurrence in the system that so that that problem does not occur again, right. That is the method which is known as 8D problem solving method. So, it is a very comprehensive method, it is not a quantitative method, it is a qualitative, it is a collaborative practice where the team of people are involved and they know exactly what is to be done by whom in case any such problem occurs, right. So, the professionals are involved, a team is involved and that is why we call it as a collaborative practice. Further about the meaning, 
AD problem solving method is a methodological procedure that targets to improve processes and operational efficiency of an organization. This method focuses on distinct stages to investigate the underlying cause of a problem and to solve it while using a team based approach. So, uh, if I explain this what is what does it mean this 8D problem solving method is a methodological procedure right. So, this is a procedure which is established and is step by step method which is targeting uh, to improve either the process or the of you know total efficiency of the business operations uh, and the the focus of this method is that it has distinct you know independent stages which are distinct from each other right to investigate to underlying cause of a problem the so so first stage would be to to recognize what the problem is then the investigation is taken place then we try to find out what is the underlying cause of the problem then the solutions are sought out or discussed amongst the team member and then they reach out to a problem uh, you know solution the, and this is a team based approach. So, in, in overall if I have to define this 8D problem solving method is a step by step uh, you know well defined process to uh, identify and investigate the problem and its root cause. The most important is we just do not address the problem on the surface. We try to address the root cause so that this problem does not occur again in the system right and, and the solution is not provided by one person. Uh, we have a team based approach to solve the problem. And the another part or aspect of 8D problem solving method is that this 8D problem solving method helps an organization to evaluate, review concerns and prevent future problems that may adversely affect the business, right. So, it does not, it does uh, you know a very important task that it actually try and you know uh, it tries to help an organization to understand to evaluate or to review the concern of the you know uh, any team uh, or any any team about a product or price or customers and also it helps in preventing the problem of such nature they may not occur that is the target. So, otherwise they may adversely affect the business. So, this this is the method which is known as 8D problem solving method. Now, if we have to apply this 8D problem solving method in any business, what should we be doing? So, as the name suggests, so you know there are, so we call it 8D, so there are Ds beginning from 0. So, basically there are 9 steps, so D0, D1, D2, D3, etc. So, D0 is preparing a plan, D, D1 is forming a team, D2 is describing the problem. D3 is developing an interim containment plan, D4 is analyzing the root cause, D5 is identifying the permanent corrective action, D6 is implementing and validating the PCA, D7 is preventing recurrence, D8 is recognizing individuals and team contribution. So, now I will be discussing all these Ds uh, one by one. So, let us begin with D0. D0 says preparing a plan. So, now the question comes in how can a business plan to solve a problem when the problem is not known? Very, very valid question is not it? Because problem occurs and then uh, we have to address it. So, when we say uh, preparing a plan does not mean we have to counter for a particular problem in that plan itself. The plan has to have category of different problems, you know problems pertaining to customers, products, prices, operation, efficiency, whatever, T uh, team members. So, we have to have a plan what will happen if such kind of problem. So, problems are categorized or grouped into different, different categories 
and that there is a plan for each of the category right. So, we are not planning for a particular problem, we are rather planning for a group of problem which are of similar natures and we have plan for every kind of group right. We may have one group pertaining to customers, another group pertaining to product, another group pertaining to government issues, another group could be legal issues, another group, group could be you know pricing services, customers, clients, competitors etc etc, employees even. So, our plan should be what if a particular problem of this group happens, who would be addressing it? who would be solving, how the problem would be addressed, what all the steps would be there, right. So, that is a particular written black and white plan. So, we have to have because we say this is a methodological method, right. So, if it is a methodological technique, there have there has to be a method, well defined method. So, in this method the D0 says make a plan and the plan has to has have groups of identical problems. Then D1 is that we need to form a team. So, in the plan we have to mention that who would be team addressing a particular type or kind of problem, right. So, we have to form a team for every kind of problem separately. So, there could be multiple teams you know which are documented in the in the uh, you know sheet in the in the plan and SOP you may say. So, we have to form a team and it is known to everybody in advance because such plan is circulated and is available to everyone uh, in, the, in the workplace, in the organization. So, we have to form a team and it should be known to team members as well as to others as well. What if this particular kind of problem occurs, whom should I approach to as a manager, as a leader, as a team worker? Right, so the team is there and is known to everybody, it is documented. That is the D1. Now, the D2 says describing the uh, problem, uh, you know, describing the problem itself. Now, uh, we have to who will be describing the people who are facing it, people who are getting the information about the problem you know if it is something which is faced by customers, they are customer complaints, right. Now, the customer complaint could be about anything. So, there should be the team member, there should be one, two, three person in the team depending on the size of the organization or the type of the problem who will be defining, who will be describing the problem pertains to product, features, price, operations, what or technical issue. What kind of if it is a problem pertaining to the product, you know the customers uh, complaints. Now, customers complaint could be pertaining to any aspect of the product. It could be uh, post sale service installation, it could be you know if it is electronic product, it could be uh, the malfunction, it could be uh, delivery, it could be pricing, it could be any such thing, right. So, describing the problem is D2 which is very very important and is the actually th uh, you know D2 in the 8D method this is the most important unless we are able to define what the problem is. So, problem identification and description is as important as the solution because you may not end up finding the right solution simply because as a team you fail to describe the problem correctly right. So, description of the problem in the right manner is important that then only it is possible to address the problem correctly. So, this is D2. So, what is D3? D3 is developing an interim containment plan, right. So, the first effort of the plan or the team who is working in the plan or is documented as a team should be to contain the problem immediately, right. For example, if there is a fire, so we do not have to figure out the root cause as, as a first action. First action should be to, to contain the fire, is not it? Same thing is about 
some for faulty product is been distributed. If it is a pharmaceutical company, some drug which has some reaction coming up and reported by many people. So, we have to the con in interim containment plan should be such to withdraw the supplies from all the stores wherever it has been sent to. So, that there is no death, there is no, no further complaint right before we find the root cause that should be the next step. But first of all we need to contain the problem right. So, we call it as containment plan. So, we, we have to develop an interim containment plan in writing beforehand everybody should be knowing if there is a you know, complaint regarding the product or problem regarding the product or the plant or the machinery or the customer complaint, pricing, operation, any kind of you know issue. So, what is the containment plan? How will we contain if there is a problem in the plant machinery? How will we contain if the customers are complaining? How will we contain uh, the problem if, uh, if the employees go on, or, you know, they go on strike? So, we have to have interim containment plan uh, before we reach out to the root cause that would be later on when we analyze the problem right. So, first of all there should be in black and white a containment plan being prepared written and of course, it is the part of the plan we prepare. We define the team, we define how we will describe the problem, who will be the describing the problem and also the containment what if such kind of problem happens how are we going to contain it immediately that is my first reaction. For example, when corona occurred that was also a problem and many academic institutions they have you know had a meeting and decided into immediately start the classes in online mode later on they found you know uh, what are the best more or, or other options, how the students are responding, how the faculty is cooperate, you know, co coping up with this demand, uh, either they are coping, uh, either uh, the faculty is able to cope up it effectively or not, either students are understanding the content which is delivered online or not, right. So, the first purpose is to contain and the, uh, what was here the containment it was to resume teaching right. There were institutions which, which took only a week's time another there were another who took month. There were institutions who which took an, about 2-3 months to resume their semesters were delayed right. So, this interim containment plan is very important and is known as D3. Now, coming to D4 analyzing the root cause once we have contained the problem through implementing containment plan in the in D3 right. Next step would be to find out why does this problem occur right. So, the, so the plan would be to reach out to the root cause. So, we have to analyze the root cause why did it happen if there was a fire in the machinery and the plant why did fire happen first containment action was the plan was to contain the fire right. The second thing is now to find out the root cause. If there was an accident in the plant, somebody died, somebody had some injury, some laborer had some injury, the purpose is immediately to stop the functioning of the plant to save that person to rush to the hospital that was containment right. The, but the next step immediate would be to analyze why did that accident happen in the plant right. Could we avoid it? What is the root cause? Was it the fault of the plant machinery process or the employees negligence? What kind of root cause was this? So, that is D4. Now, D5 is about you know identifying the permanent corrective action PCA we call it as permanent corrective action. So, here we identify uh, the action plan which should be implementable permanently right. Any such problem should if this was an accident we found the root cause. So, we have to have implement a solution where any such or similar accident will not happen shall not happen in the future. 
that is the permanent corrective action right it's not that it's okay this time we rush to the hospital we save the gentlemen or women whosoever face the problem but we are not uh, we are not taking care of the future occurrence so the purpose is to uh, take care of future occurrence that is why the permanent corrective action is required and which, which is known as pca now the d6 under ad plan is that we have to implement and validate the pca once we implement that permanent action plan or the corrective plan we need to after implement implementation we need to test it we need to validate it through the, with the help of data or some testing some kind of mock mock playing etc right so we can repeat that issue in a mock way and see if we are able to avoid that problem to reoccur or not so this is known as implementing the pca the permanent uh, corrective action and then to validate it so that we could actually prevent the occurrence again and that is what the d7 is in order in this you know order of occurrence the d7 is preventing reoccurrence so here we have to ensure that plan which we made as a pca is implemented well and there is no recurrence of such thing which happened uh, you know which we, for which we made the plan so if we our plan was good and our plan would be as good as our diagnosis is mind you right our plan is dependent on either we diagnosed analyze the problem correctly or not because you may end up thinking as a team oh yes we we won the problem we we provide we could reach to the solution but what if if uh, the analysis was wrong what if the whole problem definition was wrong and if the problem was not defined well certainly the corrective action which you think is there will not be able to contain the problem right and it is likelihood to face the same problem again in future because you did not diagnose the problem well so to to ensure prevention of reoccurrence is the the no uh, second step that was d2 was defined to define the problem or describe the problem that becomes really really important imperative so that was d7 last d8 is about recognizing individuals and team contribution so at organizations which as i'm saying are now becoming very large in sizes and operations they are working across the countries along the across the globe and uh, and there are team members from various parts of the world and the team members who worked at solving a problem may not be sitting at one place may not be coming from the same one culture may not be the nation of one uh, country even right so there could be individual there could be team members who really contributed to find out pca and they were the ones who needed to be recognized right so as a system it should be well defined that how will uh, the team and the individuals who contributed to provide the solution be recognized so this is defined in advance in the plan itself because that gives Uh, moral boost to the team right so recognizing individual and team members for their contribution is important so uh, so so that they are uh, uh, other members who come forward to solve problems in future they they are happy to part of the problem solving team so that should be a whole system of addressing a problem and this is what is known as 8d problem solving method i hope i was able to explain you all the eight steps in the method in fact there are nine steps and uh, and i hope this problem solving method will help you to solve problems at your workplace or in your life so with this i would like to sign off thank you very much